Hey, what's up folks? This will be a quick one on Puppeteer. Puppeteer is a headless browser for Node.js. Uh, Node.js you can think of as the V8 JavaScript engine from Chrome. It's, you know, tweaked out, not quite the same, but it's, it's basically what it is. But it doesn't have a rendering engine. It can't render a page like, say, Chrome can with its Blink rendering engine. Puppeteer puts a headless Chrome in his in your node project so you can render web pages and inspect them and manipulate them and do all kinds of neat stuff so let's take a look let's uh initialize a new node project we'll go npm install p-u-p-p-e-t-e-e-r there's lots of repeated letters in there it's a little hefty uh Mine's probably still in my cache somewhere, so it's going quick, uh, but it is a whole web browser engine, so you might need to be patient, but it's installed. Let's uh, make a new index file, and I have a puppeteer snippet we can look at, and I'll just walk you through this. It's uh, grabbing puppeteer, and I've just got a URL here we're gonna work with example.com, which is a real thing. We're going to launch a new browser. We're gonna wait for the browser to be ready to render a new page. We're gonna set the viewport to a width and height. And this is where you can do lots of interesting stuff. You can set it to say a responsive phone size and see how your site is rendering there. Do kind of automated testing that way. Uh, there are better tools if you wanna do a whole bunch of automated testing but uh, you can do it with puppeteer and we're going to load that url and wait until network idle the reason why we do that particularly for example.com it won't matter but a lot of the websites we build have maps that come in via javascript after page load has happened and if we don't put in wait till network idle you'll probably get a empty box where your map is because all that is coming later so by waiting for network idle, we're basically waiting for everything going around on the network to just chill out. And then we're just gonna take a snapshot of it. We're gonna take a PNG. You can also take a PDF. We'll save that and go node index.js. Off it goes. And this is what example.com looks like. So we're taking pictures. Great, let's do more interesting stuff. This is one of our children, Polaris 3G. It is not something I built, so if you think it's awesome, I don't get any credit for this. And if you think it is merely good, you're wrong, but I get no blame for that. So, let's, what do you wanna do? We've got a search box here. Let's put some text into that search box and see what happens. So we'll go inspect. Let's see, what are you? This is a search box with an input ID of main search. So let's go and grab that. We're gonna go await. I go page.type, because that's what we're gonna do into that box. We're going to give it that ID, main. I think it's weird, it's a yeah, weird case. Main search, and we're gonna give it some text to put in there. We're going to go give it part of an address. Uh, all right. Oh, we need to change the URL we're going to to this one. And see what we get. Mm -mm -mm. No elephant, no element found for selector mean search. Did I mistype it? ID main, oh, I missed an R. So if you give it some DOM elements to find and you mistype them, uh, yeah, it'll, it'll let you know. Now let's look, see we've typed into that search box on that image. Now you see this little uh, time thing saying I'm stuff's coming. Uh, what's happening there is we just typed and we didn't wait for it to actually return anything. Let's try giving it a delay. We'll just say uh, 500 milliseconds and see if that's enough to get us an actual address suggestion in that box. 
Mm, got a little delay built in now. Rendering to page. And it's saying no match found. I wonder if that's because the delay isn't long enough. That might be the default. It might might be a flash of unstyled no no thing fan. Let's, let's try it again. Because that's a real address. Let's see if we give it a thousand milliseconds if it will come up with a suggestion there. And we're waiting. Yep, now it has a suggestion 5501 restart. That must be a flash of unstyled not found, which is probably not a thing. So we can we can interact with the page. We can click on buttons, we can enter forms. You can do a multi-part form entry where you enter some stuff and click next and enter some stuff and click next. You can do lots of interesting interactive stuff on your page, interacting it in typing how a user might actually interact with it with their mouse and keyboard. So that's neat. Let's scrape some data. I mean, we have the whole page as a DOM now. You can see we selected a DOM element. Let's comment that out. Let's search for an address. We'll, we'll, we'll find that address. 5501. Pick that. Now we're here. Now this actually puts all that in the URL. So we're just going to copy that and change our URL. So this URL now goes directly to that address. You see we've got some stuff coming up over here. Say we want to scrape these values out of this table. So let's inspect that. That table is the table ID of identity. So we're going to evaluate a, a DOM selection. So let's go const data equals await page.evaluate. And we're not going to pass it anything. It's just empty function. Now that we're in, Node doesn't know anything about the DOM. It doesn't, if you type in document and node, you're, it's, it's a bad day. But since we're in Puppeteer in this page evaluation, it does know what a document is. So we can go, uh, let's just get all the TDs um, from that table. That's where those values are. TDs equals and do array.from because uh, document.query selector all returns, you know, the not quite array, array stuff. And we'll go pound identity and then TD. So that will get us all the TDs from the DOM as an array, but that's like the whole uh, DOM element. We just want the inner HTML. So let's go return tds.map and we'll go TD and just get us the inner HTML. And let's console.log that. data. All right. Did we win? Mm -mm 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 -mm. Look at that. You see down on our console, we have an array of basically these two parcel ID values from this table. So, and because we have access to the document, you can JavaScript manipulate, pull out a hundred million different ways, whatever you want to pull out of a page. So that's how you can use Puppeteer to scrape data out of a page. Neat, huh? Cool? Cool. Well, that's Puppeteer in a very tiny nutshell. There's a lot of things you can do with it. Anything from, you know, testing, see if a page is up, to uh, you can produce a whole series of screenshots at different resolutions of your site very quickly, so you can take a look at them. You can scrape data from a website, hopefully legally. Uh, I'm looking at you, whoever you are, and just do all kinds of neat stuff. Anyway, I hope you found that useful. Hopefully this was recorded. I'm on, I'm running Wayland right now on KDE and you know, things are weird. I will catch you later. Bye-bye.